Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you've just tuned in to the London Watch Collector channel, I'm a watch enthusiast, a watch collector, and I love everything to do with watches, horology. I release my reviews every Saturday at seven in the morning, GMT time. So if you're into watches, horology, make sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, do leave me some comments, any advice you require, and I'll be more than happy to help. So this week we have a special review it's another Rolex watch, of course, but it's not just any Rolex watch. It's the big boy of sports diver watches. And of course, it's the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue James Cameron. So before I start with this review, I think it's very important to tell you guys why has it taken me so long to buy this watch. And it wasn't just because of the waiting list, but it was more to do with does the watch actually fit my lifestyle, my wrist, because it goes without a doubt, it's a beautiful watch, the way the dial is, you know, how it changes from light blue to black. But honestly, I was always reluctant because I always knew it's a huge watch. And you'll actually see after this review, once we try it on wrist, I don't think I can pull it off and not everyone could. If you've watched my last couple of weeks reviews, you'll know that I'm contemplating about my collection currently. I'm trying to refine them. I'm making it more about the quality, not the quantity. I thought it was actually important to buy this watch, just like with the Sea Dweller 43. Unless you buy it, wear it, review it, only then you will know whether it fits in the collection or not. So there's a chance it won't be staying. I'm not so sure yet, but stay tuned. In the coming weeks, probably a month or so, you will find out my complete collection, what I kept, what I let go of, and it's gonna be more of adding watches that will add something to the collection itself. So without further ado, let's start with the unboxing. So of course, as always, you have your Rolex box and I think this would be the first time I show you on my channel the size of this box which is a large. It will say on the sleeve I mentioned earlier so it's going to be S, M or L, small, medium or large. I have received it as well with my Sea Dweller 4000 so I'm guessing that they will categorize those watches together because even on the booklet you'd see always Sea Dweller 4000 and the Deep Sea Deep Blue. And there you go guys, that's the watch. So before I go into detail, I'll just show you things that come with. So you have a slot at the back where the booklet is. That's your Rolex wallet, or let's say card holder. You have your service manual, as well as your guarantee card with your reference number. At the back, you'd have your serial number, reference number, date of purchase, your name. And of course, a bezel protector to protect your watch during transport. course as always the Rolex tag that's the white tag they changed after 2016 and then you have your Rolex superlative chronometer certification and finally the watch sorry about the lighting I'm trying different types of environment I thought the natural light would be good for this let me zoom in for you guys So let me tell you more about this watch, because I think it's an important one. Rolex actually made a special watch commemorating James Cameron. So this watch was released in 2012. It has a reference 11660. And as I said, for the first time ever, Rolex actually released a watch commemorating James Cameron for his solo dive. And it was actually at the Mariana Trench. It wasn't the deepest dive in history, but it was definitely the deepest solo dive. The dial would be a 44 millimeter case and it has a trip lock winding crown. It's made of 904L stainless steel as well as titanium which is the case bag as you can see. 
So why did they choose titanium? Believe it or not, they wanted to make the watch a bit lighter. It's a hefty, heavy watch. And having a titanium case back would definitely reduce the weight on the watch. It has a unidirectional bezel of 60 minutes. So obviously it's a diver's watch, so it has to be unidirectional, not bidirectional. It has a crystal which is five and a half millimeter thick. Sapphire crystal. I feel the case itself is a amazing engineering design that was able to conquer the lowest depths in the ocean. And that's why I appreciate those kind of engineering designs and the ability to manufacture such beautiful timepieces. They've broken records and they made history with those kind of inventions. So the dial, as you can see, it fades from light blue at the 12 o'clock and then moving downwards to 6 o'clock, it actually becomes black. So that would represent the ocean. So at the top being the lightest and then the deeper you go, the darker it becomes until it reaches pitch black. It can withstand pressure, which is equivalent to three tons, down to a depth of 3,900 meters. And the glide lock on this watch is different, unlike the subs that you have, where it's actually at the bottom This is at the top, as you can see. So the deep sea writing is actually a different color. It's not the white you usually get. It's a light green. And this color represents the capsule or the submersible vehicle that James Cameron used. And to be exact, that was on the 26th of March, 2012. And believe it or not, while he was doing his solo dive, he wasn't wearing this watch. What Rolex actually did, they designed another one because this can only withstand depths to 3,900 meters, but James Cameron went down to 10,906 meters. So they actually had to design another watch, which was the supercharged Rolex Deep Sea. So this Deep Sea you see is the one they're selling, so that's, that's the commercial one. And when the actual dive took place, it was worn on the capsule's arm. After spending around seven hours down there and coming up, it was still keeping perfect time, no problems whatsoever. And they estimated that around 12 tons of weight was on the Sapphire. So with all this said, can you not buy this watch? Even if you know it's not gonna stay, but you need to own it to understand and to appreciate it. Of course, we can't forget about the movement. It's the basic 3135 movement which is a common movement on all the Rolex diver watches, including your Yachtmaster one, your subs. And of course, we can't forget the wrist shot. As you can see, it's huge on my wrist. I have a 16 and a half, 17 centimeter wrist and it is huge. It's even bigger than the Sea Dweller 43, especially the thickness. You can't hide it under a cuff and I feel it is way, way too big. So once again, will it stay? Will it not? I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, only time would tell. And of course, if you stay tuned, you'll find out what I'll be adding, what I'll be removing from the collection. So guys, this was a short one again. I hope you enjoyed this review. Do let me know your thoughts. As always, I really appreciate your comments. Make sure if you like this video to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and share your comments and thoughts. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.